I often find myself needing a quick and simple pattern that I can use as background material or even for simple shapes and won't get pixelated if we zoom in like they would with an image texture. So let me show you how to make basic patterns that you might want to use. I'm Dude Blender, let's jump right in. So first of all, enable the Node Wrangler if you haven't already. Going to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons and search for Node Wrangler. I've already got it enabled, so if you don't, just click here. I'm gonna delete all of this and let's start by adding a plane. I'm gonna go to the Shading Workspace. I like how everything is set up already here. I'm gonna go to Top View so that we can see the pattern. Let's go ahead and add a new material and change the name to Stripes because that's the easiest one and that's the one that we're gonna begin with. All right, so whenever you create a new material, you begin with these two nodes. So we're pretty much just gonna use one node and then the mapping nodes. Let's go ahead and Shift A and start typing Wave and select the Wave Texture and we're gonna place it here. You can also do Shift A, go to the Texture menu and then select the Wave Texture. We're gonna connect this to the base color. We see that it's not a sharp line and it has this gradient that goes from black to white and then again to black and so on and so forth. And the reason is that this is a sine wave. So imagine that the sine wave is going outside and inside of the plane. So you start with zero, it goes up, down, up, down. So whenever it's all the way up, it's one, so it's white, and whenever it's on zero, it's on black. But there a transition it doesn't go sharp and for this pattern we actually want it to go sharp so we're just gonna add a color ramp here select it and if we click on the noodle we can just connect it right there this doesn't change anything because again we have the gradient but if we change this from linear to constant I'm gonna go back again to the top view with 7 and if we drag the slider to the left we get the stripes pattern and if we zoom in we can see that now we have a really sharp line if we change the position of the slider to let's say 0.5 we're gonna have alternating stripes that are the exact same width. Now, one more thing to note, we're using a plane here, but let's say that we were to extrude this and now you'll see that the top, front, back and the bottom sides are working properly, but not the sides. So if you're using any shape that's not a plane, you might want to unwrap it first and then we're gonna use that UV map to apply the pattern. So I'm gonna go to the UV editing here just to show you. We need to add a few seams. So I'm just gonna press two for edge select, select this, this, and this edge, press U for the UV mapping menu and we can click on mark seam. Now we can just select everything, press U again, unwrap, and for this shape we can just use smart UV project. Just leave the default settings, click on unwrap, and now we have this. If I go back to shading and then select the wave texture and press Ctrl T. This adds the texture coordinate and the mapping nodes. Since now we have a UV map that we just created, we can use the UV output instead of the generated. So connect that here and you'll see that the texture is now working on all sides. You'll see that it's not aligned properly and that's because of how we unwrapped the texture. So one way to fix it relatively quickly and it will depend on how we made the seams, we can just press 3 to get the face select mode. Press Alt and click here on the edge so that we select all of these faces. We're selecting a face loop, so we're not selecting the top and bottom, only the sides. One thing we can do is press shift, click on one of the faces and then click on the face again. This makes this face active. Now we can press U again, unwrap and follow active quads. We can just leave that as it is and press OK. Now it doesn't do a perfect job in this case because you'll see that there are only three sides here and you'll see that one of them is on top of each other. So we can just select the face and now we need to grab it to make sure we're selecting the right face and we're not. So we can either move this in X, 1, just so that we're able to select this. Now we move this with G, Y, and now we want to move this in Y, one length. So we can just grab it with G, Y, press B, that enables base point, and we can just click here and then here. So now we moved it exactly one length. Now we select this, G, X, minus one to bring it back. And now we have our sides perfectly aligned. All right, let's go back to shading. All right, so this is a setup for the stripes pattern. The wave texture has a distortion value that we can use to make these lines a little bit more stylized. So we can increase that a little bit and you'll see that it makes wavy lines like a Tim Burton, Beetlejuice kind of thing. Also, if you want to change the colors, you can do it directly here in the color wrap. We can change this from black to, let's say, I don't know, kind of orange and then this other color to let's say blue and we have that. So keep in mind that whatever colors you need you can change them right here on the color ramp. I'm just gonna go black and white again. So now let's say that we want a grid instead of just these stripes. In the node texture we have this value that changes the orientation of the waves. So the idea would be to mix a node that has these stripes like this with another one that has the stripes in the other orientation. And so that way we'll get a grid. And this is actually very easy to do. I'm just gonna duplicate the wave texture node 
just keep all of the values. I'm going to change this to Y. If I control shift left click on any of the nodes, you connect it directly to the material output. Of course, we see this fuzziness because this one is not connected to the color ramp. Also, you'll see that we changed the orientation, but the stripes are actually on the same orientation. So we need to connect the mapping node as well here. And now everything is fixed. So we have this one and this one, and we want to mix them together. So control shift, right click, and drag between both nodes will create a mix color node. And you'll see that it will keep the connections. So I'm gonna control shift left click on the principle to connect it directly to the material output. And I'm just gonna move this here. All right, I'm gonna expand the mix node so that we see what we have. So the default blending node is mix with a factor of 0.5. And with those values, we get something like this, which is actually not what we want. So we need to change the blending mode from mix to darken. And we need to change the factor all the way to one. So now what this node is doing is saying, for every pixel of the texture, whatever color is darker between these two, take that color. And so we end up with a grid. And now with the slider, we can control the thickness of the lines. Now, if you want to change the scale of this, you will need to change each of these independently. And we want to save a little bit of time, so we don't want to be doing that. To fix it, shift A and type value. So this creates a value node that we can connect to both of the scales. Then we can change this to something like five. And now if we want to change the scale of this pattern, we just change this number. Now let's try to make a grid, but without the wavy lines. And you can of course do it by changing the distortion here to zero, and now we have a grid. But we have a bunch of nodes that we don't need. So I'm going to delete all of these nodes, and I'm going to add a Voronoi texture. I'm going to connect this to the color ramp, the vector to the vector here. I'm going to slide this to see what we're looking at. Now, this is not what we wanted. So we're going to change this from F1 to distance to edge. I'm going to slide this a little bit again. So now we get this pattern. I'm going to change the scale. But here's another pattern that you might want to use. But to turn this into a grid, we just need to reduce the randomness to zero. And now we have a grid using only literally one node and the color ramp. In the same way, we can change the thickness of the lines by dragging this slider. And if we drag it enough, we can just make a pattern of little squares. And so note that these two nodes and these two nodes are pretty much the same all the time. So everything we're doing is happening between these two nodes. So we're basically doing all of these patterns using very few nodes that we can set up in seconds. I'm gonna drag this a little bit again to make thinner lines. And you'll see that there is no distortion value here, but we can do some things to make these lines a little bit more interesting. So let's go ahead and shift A and we're going to add a noise texture node. We're going to place it here. I'm going to connect this. And the idea is that we want to vary the thickness of the strokes of these lines as if they were drawn by hand or with a pen. Now again, control shift and drag between these two nodes. I'm going to make some room. Move this here. Expand the mix node. Again, change the factor all the way to one. And we're going to change the blending node now from mix to multiply. So depending on what you want, we can increase the scale of the noise a lot. And then we start getting these wavy textures. And if we change the scale back to five, you get this different effect. One more thing to note here, we can change this from 3D to 4D. You could use the W value to animate the texture. Now this is a very, very simple way to make a pattern look more interesting. I'm just gonna leave it in 3D for now. Now I'm going to increase this to 10. And let's say that we wanted a little bit more control over how much the noise is affecting the grid. We can add a color ramp here after the noise texture node. Now, if we drag the left slider to the right, we'll get more texture in the grid. This is too big, so let me change this to, let's say, 50. And we get this. We still have a grid, but it looks more grungy or with more movement. So with this slider, we can control how much of that extra texture we get. And with the right slider, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, we can control how much of the thickness is affected by the noise texture. So if I drag this all the way to the left, you'll see that we get a perfect grid. So with only these three nodes, we get a lot of control over the pattern. The size, the noise, the texture, and the strength of the effect. Now let's do one more grid that is also very useful, which is uh, a grid with dotted lines. So I'm going to delete these three nodes. I'm going to connect this back here just to keep the grid. So the idea is that we need to align a grid of smaller squares to this grid and then remove those squares. So let's duplicate the Voronoi texture with Shift D and place it here. We're also going to need a separate color ramp for this one. So we can just duplicate this, connect this here. I'm also going to connect the mapping to this new Voronoi texture. I'm going to make a little bit of room here. Control 
Shift, right click and drag to create a mix node. And of course nothing changes because we're essentially mixing the same thing. I'm going to change the scale here to 225.7. And now you'll see that the second grid is perfectly aligned to the first one. So the output of this one are these little squares. The output of the first one is the original grid. So the idea is that in every intersection of the original grid, we need to have a square that we're going to be deleting. So if I click on the other grid, you'll see that that's exactly what's happening. And the reason that this is happening that is perfectly aligned is that this scale is a factor of this one. So in this case, I just multiplied it by 10. Now this means that in each of the sides of the squares of the original grid, we'll now have 10 segments. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So of course we don't want to be changing the scales manually. So again, we'll just add a value node. Let's set this to 20. I'm going to connect this one directly here. You'll see that now they're not aligned. It needs to be an exact factor. We're going to add a math node, connect that here. We're going to set this to multiply and we're going to change this back to 10. Now we're going to connect this to this scale and the value directly to the first one. Now to change the scale of the whole thing, we can just modify this value. And you'll see that whatever number we have here, it's always going to be perfectly aligned. One point to note is that the way this is set up, this number needs to be an even number. So 10, 8, 4, all of these numbers work. If I go here to 5, you'll see that it's now not aligned. Now we get this different pattern, which of course we could also use if that's what we wanted. Let's leave this at 6 for now. And now instead of using the mix blending node, we're going to go to lighten and change the factor all the way to 1. And we get this. And now to change the size of each of these segments, we can drag this lighter to the right. Now when we're setting up our lines, it's easier if we just change this back to mix and change the factor to something close to 0.5. This way we can see what we're actually doing. So we want to make this longer. We can reduce the size of this, maybe reduce the thickness of the line and continue. Yeah, something like this might work. Then we go back. Factor 1, lighten. Now we get our dotted line. If we drag this way too much, we'll start getting a different pattern, like a film strip, which is of course something that we could use. And just by playing with these sliders, we can get all sorts of things. So film strip, we make this smaller. Now we can also do kind of a railroad track. And if we change this to an odd number like 5, we get something like this. So you'll see that just using a few nodes, we can get a bunch of different patterns that we can literally set up in less than a minute. Now let's make a polka dot pattern. Is that going to be difficult to make? Actually, it's going to be super easy, barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? I'm going to delete all of this. I'm going to leave the Voronoi texture and the color ramp. Connect this here. Now I'm just going to reset the whole node by selecting it and pressing backspace. I want to change the interpolation node of the color ramp again from linear to constant. Drag this here. And now you'll see that we've got dot. So this is half the work done. Now, as we did before with the grid, the only thing that we need here is to remove the randomness. So let's change that to zero. And basically we're done. Now it's just a matter of changing the size of the dots and the scale of the whole thing. Now, of course, if you don't want a perfect grid, we can just change the randomness to a number that works for you. So this could work. And then we can continue to play with the size of the dots. If we increase it more, we get a different pattern. Now, if we increase the size of the dots, they can start over overlapping and we get a different pattern. So let's do this smaller again, go back to zero randomness. Now with this same setup, instead of dots, we can have diamonds just by dragging this to the right until the dots start overlapping each other. And now we have diamonds or, you know, a four point star shape. And we can, of course, make it smaller or larger. Now let's go back to dots again. Now let's say that we just want outlines of the circles and we don't want them filled. We can add another color here, put the white color between them, and then it's just a matter of changing the size to whatever we want. So that's another pattern. And if we want the donuts, we could add two more, change this to white. And again, we just change the thickness of the lines to whatever it is we're looking for. So I think that's our donut. Okay, let's reset this constant. And now the final trick is going to be to make a half tone with these dots. So let's make them way smaller, something like that. And now the idea is that we want to control the size of the dots based on another texture. To show you the idea, let's make a gradient texture. We can connect this. And now there's really no way to connect the color ramp to this gradient texture. So we're not going to use a color ramp and we're going to add a map range node instead, which in many ways can do the same things as a color ramp. So we're going to connect this to the value, the result to the color. Now again, we have this gradient, which we don't want. So we're going to change this from linear to stepped linear and we're going to change the steps to one. Now we have something that we can use. 
And if I change the from max, you'll see that I can control the size of the dots. So we want to use this texture to control that size. So we can just go ahead and plug in the factor or the color, it doesn't really matter, to the front max socket. So we get this half tone. But now let's say that we wanted to make the dots larger. We could add another map range node after the gradient texture. So now we can change the from max or the to max values to make the dots larger and make it look more like an actual half tone. In fact, if we zoom in, we can actually overlap the dots and get something like this. We can, of course, make the scale smaller by changing the Voronoi texture to something larger, and we get something like that. Now, with this setup, we can change the gradient texture to a noise texture. Again, connect the mapping, connect the factor to the value, and we get something like this. And here we can change the scale of the noise and the scale of the dots to get whatever effect that we're looking for. We can reduce this value maybe a little bit and we get something like that. And that's it. A bunch of patterns that you can do using just a handful of nodes. I'm Dude Blender. Happy blending.